Imperial Knights are the biggest, baddest mechs in the game. I don't care what any of you Chaos or uh, uh, Eldar, Eldar players, players say. Get out of here. We love them. Uh, they're one of the most beloved factions in the game. They have a huge fan base. We like them. Um, but they've always had a weird position in the game. Yeah. Due to the nature of being a very small army with very, very big, killy things, right? Uh, this is no different. In fact, it's probably exacerbating more than ever in 9th edition. Um, we've been playtesting the of them a bunch, and so we're going to be talking about what that means for them moving forwards. We'll talk about positives, negatives, uh, in, and even some lists, um, list ideas going forwards. All right. Let's take a look. So let's talk about first why they're kind of a weird faction, right? Yeah. Um, they've, they're really, really hard to balance. Absolutely. It's an impossible army to balance because, as you point out, it's a handful of invincible models, yeah. all with really powerful abilities. And it's one of those things that you could have brought a really great army to the battlefield, mm -hmm. but if you didn't tech at least 1,100 points into knight killing, yep. you're not going to kill knights. And uh, that can create a feel-bad moment. And I think it's totally fine in narrative play, where you, you're having a chat with your friend, you know what you're going to play. But in right. a match play setting, where one day you've got to fight 200 infantry, and then, and then the very next table you've got to yeah. fight four or five knights, right. it's really hard to balance this army. And I personally think that in ninth edition, they balance them a little on the weaker side, mm -hmm. which is the better place for them to be. Mm -hmm. Make make the knight player really work for the win, right. rather than putting them on the easy mode where everyone's just going to bring four knights to every tournament. <laughs> That's fair. And I mean, you know, the truth is they have to balance the game for the majority of the armies and to have something so vastly different. Yeah. That's the way it is. So, so kind of thinking, keeping, keeping that in mind, let's talk about some positives. Yeah, and there the are army. some positives, for sure. There are. So knights traditionally had to bring some buddies to get yeah. command points, right? In 8th edition, you would gain command points as you had uh, additional detachments, things like that. Yeah, especially if you were taking that guard uh, battalion. You know, you would take those loyal 32, pick up your guardsmen, get your points. You know, that was really crucial. Yeah, exactly. And now, of course, it's the complete opposite. Um, every detachment that you buy costs additional command points. So luckily, you can play Mono Knights, have pretty much more command Main points than ever. Yeah. Um, you're getting basically 17 over the, over the course of the game. And this is really great for Knights because they have tons of amazing tricks that in the yeah. past be like, well, I'm going to do my Raven strat and I need to kind of save everything for that. Now you can do all the, the interesting this things. This is also the difference between going from three Knights in a list to four Knights in a list. It is actually. Or yeah. it's the difference of going from three Knights to three Knights and some Armagers or something like that or Hellbrands. And so it allows you yeah. to play uh, kind of a, a really cool, beautiful, all giant mechanized right. army and you don't have to worry about that default loyal 32 and so i'm really into this for the idea of just building those thematic all night households mm -hmm. i think uh, it's going to create cooler armies i feel you and something that helps them bridge this gap is the fact that terrain is changed um, and, and specifically engagement ranges changed, that's right right so before uh you couldn't really fight something that was on the upper levels there was of course the strat but you could only use it for what reaper chain swords it was only the reaper chain sword not even the the, the the gauntlet could do it. It was, yeah. it was just devastating reach. And you couldn't do it with your stomps. That means you're shooting knights. All you had to do was stand on that second floor and you were invincible. <laughs> Can't do anything. <laughs> right. Now you have that five inch vertical right. engagement range, which not only makes it easier to fight up, it makes your charge shorter most of these mm -hmm. times. Which is a big deal. Yeah, it means that your knights are more often going to be shooting and fighting, which is when they're at their best. And you can have multiple of these doing it, right? Before, even when, right. with the strat, it was one knight. And honestly, if there wasn't for this this change, that would have been a huge, huge hit to knights because you need all your knights going at full throttle the yeah. whole game. Well, and also the Reaper Chainsword is not always what you want. If you've got a 10-man squad at the top, so the good. Reaper Chainsword is not always the best weapon, right? Exactly. So uh, that's a great change, and it impacts all fighty vehicles. But mm -hmm. I think the knights, more than anything, are really celebrating that change. That's right. And one thing that they love to do is get up in the midboard and hold it. They're yeah. great at fighting. They can go deep. They can have long range shooting. They can go, of course, full throttle to get get pretty um, deep, pretty fast. That's right. But ideally, they're just popping their twelve up, getting on objectives, yeah. fighting for things, defending things there, and that's ultimately what the game has been about. That right? is exactly what ninth edition is about. You're going to have a handful of objectives mid board. Yep. You need to hold them for more than half the game generally, mm -hmm. and the knights are excellent getting up there immediately and owning it for many reasons. Not just because they're big and durable. Mm -hmm. Their base size is huge, and they can hold it. They heroically intervene. And they've just got the power to fight and shoot and generally just hold those objectives, hopefully long enough to win most of these games. That's right. And one important thing to think about is the primary mission, right? That's right. So currently, in 9th edition, the primary mission is now entirely based on holding objectives. That's right. Um, but it's also about holding, um, holding, you can hold one, hold two, or hold more, generally speaking. It's like yeah. this sort of paradigm. Um, and knights are really good at being able to push one flank, right? So yes. we, we've seen a lot of missions and a lot of play styles where you have the two kind of in the back, armagers are, are kind of great for that, and you can push up one flank and really bully, bully people off of that and really force them to not want to come to you, right? And, yeah. that, and they're really good at that. A lot of armies can get on points 
but they can't survive it or they can't push a flank. That's right. Things like that. Because you only score at the top of your turn. It's really easy to believe that you're yeah. going to be able to keep your knight, even if it's only on a couple wounds, to the top of your next turn. Yeah. So absolutely fantastic ability. Now they took out the kill points, which used to be a real strength for this mm -hmm. army, where you would deny kills with your knights. Right. Thankfully, that's actually still in the game if you want it to be, because mm -hmm. there's a secondary uh, objective that you could pick called attrition, and it gives you four points per turn if you kill more. Absolutely, and one, one kind of weird, potentially meta thing is we think that multiple spawn units are going to be very powerful, right? That's Lots true. of small squads. Yeah. And so in our games, we found that attrition comes up again and again and again. And the moment that you come to a, a table and you face a knight player, you lose that. They have yes. to play uh, other harder secondaries, honestly. And you're saying, cool, I'm going to get my one kill. If I lose a knight, I'm already kind of in trouble with that. Yeah. Um, so it lets you play knights uh, more the way that you want to already. Exactly. Right? It doesn't have to be about pure offense with your knights. You can be a lot more tactical. And you can definitely use them in such a way to just hold that board, mm -hmm. counter, counter react, play your durability up as much as you can, have those knights come back to life, hold those yep. objectives, all the tricks you've got, it's going to be fantastic. But it isn't all good news. There are some negatives for the knights, so why don't you take us through some of those? So ultimately, knights are super cool. But yeah. they are also very points heavy. Yeah, that's um, right. You know, like you were saying, we're looking at maybe three, three big knights, maybe, maybe four, depending yeah. on how you're running them couple Armagers, um, and ultimately, again, this is a game about board control, and in some missions, there's, what, six objectives? Correct. It is a ton of ground you have to cover, yeah. and you, you are limited by the size of your army, and this is where, um, while we get more CP without having to take um, allies, things like Admech and Guard, they did help us in the past get on objectives and just have cheap bodies that could hide. And that's exactly right. Now, all of your knights have to be playing the mission, yeah. and that means in the, in the, the missions that have five, six objectives, you're gonna to need to be spread out, and mm -hmm. as soon as you start losing one asset, two assets, yep. your ability to control the board is gonna go down dramatically. It also means you can't really have knights supporting each other as much. Right. You're gonna to have to have each knight really holding its own, holding down an objective more often than not, and you just don't have that many bodies. Your, no. your opponent can be smart, focus fire where it matters, and uh, take the board away from you. And we've been sort of making sure that we make our, our knights more heroic, like in, in many, many cases literally, so you can yeah. do heroic interventions, so you can get some more relics, things like that, because they have to do that much more on their own, right? Yeah, um, each one needs to stand alone. Exactly. Absolutely. So one other thing that has been sort of uh, the source of a lot of chatter is this issue about obscuring terrain sure. with uh, big things, right? Yes. So um, just to sort of recap, if a, a ruin is obscuring and it's five inches or taller, if you are behind it and nobody's touching the terrain, then... Uh, you cannot be seen. You cannot be seen. seen. <laughs> Essentially, it, it blocks it blocks line of sight infinitely tall. Now, at first glance, that would be great for something like a knight. Unfortunately, the obscuring rule doesn't apply to anything with the Titanic keyword, and it doesn't apply to anything that's 18 wounds or more. That's they right. fulfill both those. And so what it means <laughs> is that if there's a big rune in between you, yeah. your opponent can shoot you, and you probably can't shoot them. So it, uh, it basically makes knights... Everyone else got harder to shoot except your knights. Yeah, it's... Uh, that's a real bummer. It's really unfortunate. Um, you're gonna have to learn to to really leverage your 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 movement yeah. on the smaller board. Yeah. <laughs> Small silver lining, but really, this is a big hit for knights. Um, they were ve they are very shooty. Yes, um, and, and so especially their height. Hurts. Their height used to allow them to benefit. shoot through that second floor. Yeah. Shoot over top of a ruin, mm -hmm. and that height was a huge advantage, an enormous yeah. advantage, and they've lost that advantage now. So this that's kind of true. a big one. Yeah. I think another big one is that really trying to soup up to hold. Mm -hmm. If you want to go back to that soup, that starts costing you CP, right? It really we does. talked about the advantages of being able to not have to soup, <laughs> but if you need to get other objective holders or you want to put them with your admech army or anything like that, you're paying CP and you're going to start to go below what you used to have before. Right. It's cool that we don't have to take it, but not only do we not have to take it, we're Punish for doing it, right? Yeah. So a patrol only gets you so many troops. That's two command points. Battalion is more. So that really starts to cut in into the efficiency of your knights. Where before and you could kind of hit that. Always spot. been a CP hungry army, right? Yeah. So that's uh, that's another thing. Another one we've been pointing out a lot is this idea that because vehicles in almost every faction got better, mm -hmm. people are probably going to take more and more points of tank killing yeah. weapons in their lists. You probably should. Yeah. And and that's <laughs> the one thing that knights really don't want to see, right? Mm -hmm. If you're prepared to kill knights. That's uh, that's really bad because if you could drop one to two knights reliably a turn, the knights just can't win the game. And this is something that we were talking, we were referencing earlier when we we're talking about how difficult this is to balance, right? Right. Um, and we've seen it before. You know, we play competitively. We've seen tournaments where knights are really strong now, so everyone has knights, right? Uh, and then the meta switches one way and things like that. So unfortunately, at least currently, tanks are great, bringing things to kill tanks. 
nicer tanks. Now, the one <laughs> nice thing is, of course, these are great at killing enemy tanks. Yes. And so that does give you something, right? Mm -hmm. I think one other w funny change is the change to the command reroll stratagem. Yeah. The command reroll stratagem uh, now uh, only lets you reroll select items. Mm -hmm. And in addition, it only lets you roll for. Um, if you have a two dice item, you have to reroll them both. So what this does is it makes charges harder for them, uh, just like it does for all armies. But in particular, there was two abilities. Um, one of them, the ability to stand back up with a dying knight, mm -hmm. or the ability to get a knight to explode. Right. Both of those now become uh, something you can't reroll the dice for, and you really needed it. It was very important because at the end of the day, you only have so many models, and knights were they relied on these really epic, really important rolls, yeah. which were cool. And this strat was so fundamental to actually making those reliably yeah, work. Absolutely. Losing that is is really big and really unfortunate. Yeah. So along with tanks being very powerful in the new edition, another thing that we think and has, has come up in a lot of our playtests that's powerful is MSU, multiple small units. That's right. They're great for popping on objectives, screening things out, and unfortunately, knights are not great at fighting these Yeah, things. knights specialize in killing a few really big, powerful targets, yeah. and this is because they're so good at fighting, and they have very powerful uh, weapons that they can't generally split fire with. Right. And so they ultimately just don't have that many unique mm -hmm. activations, right? And so they can only take on so many units at a time. And if they're wasting one of their massive guns to kill, you know, five-man scout squad or something, <laughs> it's just not getting the value that they need to start taking on the opponent's army. Yeah, and so one thing to consider, uh, it's going to require some more playtesting, but uh, thinking about knights that can shoot and do stomps, because the stomps are still pretty decent. Oh, they're fantastic. And so this is kind of a way of, of expanding what is ultimately a weakness in the new edition. Yeah, and these, unfortunately, these MSUs will turn into screens. And what the screens will do is prevent your knights from getting where they need to be. Right. Um, they could sacrifice units just to stop you from getting on objectives for turns. Yeah. And if they're faster than you and they can throw a, a sacrificial <laughs> units in front of your knights, we've seen this in 8th edition. Anytime you can just throw something in front of knights, you've got some scouts and they just run up and stop you from moving. Right. Um, it's very, very punishing, right? That's right. So something that's new to the 9th edition is the idea of actions, where sure. you're, you have a unit that goes on a point, they do a ritual or they investigate something. Um, unfortunately, yeah. pretty much... All, if not all, require you to be an infantry model. That's right. Uh, which knights are not? That's right. It's it's at least um, it's at least one third of all secondaries are action it's oriented. Yeah. There's uh, three that are psychic based, and I mm -hmm. think four that are are not psychic based, and they can't perform any of those. Yeah. So I think that that's unfortunate. Those aren't necessarily, in our opinion, the strongest secondaries, but no. it means that they have a decreased list. And they already had a decreased list That's because right. not all of the rest of them apply to them either. And even some of the uh, the, the mission specifics are also actions. That's so true. The list is even it's it, it is very harsh. Unfortunately, they do do they do lose out. Um, and some of those are actually quite powerful secondaries. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing that does hurt. Um, another consideration if you're looking to soup in some um, ad mech or something. Yeah, th those aspects of the missions are super tough. And you know what, like. As, as much as we say they're great at holding up on objectives, they still only count as one model for OPSEC mm. and things like that. And so there's uh, parts of the mission where that's the thing that hit them the worst, I think, is that just generally the mission doesn't align with what their strengths are. Right, and a lot of the, the missions are designed to encourage diversity in lists, right? It was mm. very, very intentional. Um, so it says, oh, you can't do everything with your tanks, or you can't do everything with infantry. And, and overall, this is a, we think this is a great thing for the game. But like we said, the knights are kind of this weird They're subset. They're inherently skewed, right? Exactly. So they kind of got hit by the addition in that sense. Yeah. Well, there's some ways that we can show you to still use the knights to do some tricks, mm -hmm. get those primary points that you need yeah. to. So why don't we go take a look at some of the strategies that you're going to want to use for your knights. Cool. Well, let's take a look at a relatively simple example right. that's really easy to mess up. <laughs> and it's super crucial. It was always something you could have done in 8th edition. So yeah. this is an 8th edition tactic, but this, is, this tactic is central to the game in 9th edition, and we're going to show you how a single knight can defend an objective against a lot of obsec troops. Um, because ultimately, you need to be holding objectives all the way from your turn up until the, the start of your next command phase. And if you don't do this correctly, you'll never hold ever, and you will get zero <laughs> points. So to show you what we have here, we have two units of Plague Bearers, yep. just one of 10 here, one of five. We've got an objective, and we've got our wonderful Knight Crusader here. Absolutely. So we, have, of course, have upgraded this boy to a hero. Yes. Um, and that means he can heroically intervene. This is the secret to making this work. That's this is why we recommend you make as many as you can make into them, characters. Give them that character keyword. Yep. So what you're going to do here is you're going to move up, okay? And I kind of go over the objective a bit, mm -hmm. but make sure every, every single millimeter of the objective is covered. Now, if you're looking top down here, there's a sliver that's not covered. Right. If you leave a sliver... This doesn't work. So this is why th this is important for a number of reasons. Um, let's say the demon player goes. 
we can of course say we're just going to advance over. We we can just touch one boy. Um, we can we know that we could be we have to be within three inches of the edge of this objective, right? Um, if we're within three, this guy can intervene into the plague bears. That's right. And give and probably kill them, right? Yeah, for sure. So, so five man squad. No if problem. we've exposed this little portion of the objective, though, that gives them the opportunity to come around and stay within three of the objective and outside of three of the character. That's right. So even that one model there denies you the objective. Mm -hmm. If they even put two models there, it's their objective. That's right. And so um, if you if you leave this sliver, this doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you cover it entirely. Yep. Now you have this unit right in front of you. You could charge them. But if you did, it ends up getting you nothing. Right. You hurt the unit, but the objective is uh, exposed, exposed and you're gonna lose the point. Now you would make the charge if it was a crucial unit, like sure. someone who's gonna blow up your night next totally. turn. Most of the time, though, that's not what you're dealing with. So you cover it, don't take the bait, don't take the charge. Nope. In their next turn, they could swarm up. And now, even though they have a bunch of models within range of the objective, you can heroically intervene into both units, and you can fight them, hopefully to the point where you wipe enough of the units that are on it. So this one couldn't get close enough. Mm -hmm. The bigger unit couldn't get that close because you were on as much of this side of the objective as possible. Now, this back unit, you fight them, knock them off, and the point's yours. An interesting thing to, be, to consider with knights is there might be times like this where you do want to overwatch, um, especially yeah. if you have like double flamers, some gatlings, things like that. Um, you actually kind of want to maintain the status quo. As you said, this is what, 15 models? Yeah, it's killable with stomps, but yeah. every bit matters, things well, like yeah. that. The overwatch MSU, for something like this, yeah, the overwatch from something like this is, is pretty vicious. Yeah. And so you would do a lot of work on it. So remember, entirely co cover your objectives, use heroic interventions. Um, this is going to be key yeah. to winning your games. Let's take you through another example where we show you how to take advantage of one of the new tricks that the knights can do. Sounds good. In our second example, we'd like to talk about the five inch vertical engagement. Yeah, this really so changes these knights because before so many targets could just stay safe and be out of range. Um, we have one of the banes of the knight's existence, the Tau <laughs> Commander, with Cyclic Eye on here. And this Tau Commander is defended by Hammerhead, which is within three inches of mm -hmm. him, and yep. blocking, so he can't be shot. We've also got uh, the trusty Ethereal here. And this knight used to not be able to touch these guys, and one of these would half a knight in a turn. And for all we know, this is a second floor ruin with three commanders on it, or <laughs> six if you're far side. Right. So the fact that the knights can get in here is a big change. So there's some interesting stuff happening here. Generally speaking, uh, things like, like speculative charge are gone, right? You have to reach every target that you declare a charge against. That's right. Um, so people can use that to screen you out. However, verticality changes this drastically. Yeah, it actually flips it on its head because not only do you want to charge as many units as possible, in many cases you have to or you will fail the charge. And let's show That's you exactly right. why that'll happen here. We've got our knight and it's gonna move up and come in for a nice and easy charge. Yep. Now, it actually has the ability to charge the tank and all three characters. But mm -hmm. for instance, let's say you only wanted to fight against the commander and against the, the, the tank here. Sure. If you come in and put your base in here, you are now in engagement range with this ethereal, right. which means you failed the charge. It was an illegal charge. <laughs> yeah. And there's nowhere to put your base such that you're not char charging all three of these so models. So weird. Now in some cases, this won't be an ethereal. This will be a nine-man squad of uh, crisis suits who will overwatch you. <laughs> you have to declare them, yeah. or you will fail. Right? You cannot. Right. You cannot. Uh, you really can't get within engagement range of something that you didn't declare a charge against. This is particularly important for things like competitive matches. Um, we, and when we've been playing, we've been caught off guard by it in many, many occasions as we were learning the rules. That's right. And um, it's so important. You have to make sure you declare everything. Uh, it can make your charges uh, easier and shorter, but you, but you have to, you, you have to think. Two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally on this board, right? Yeah. It completely changes the math. Um, that overall is a great thing, thing for knights, but you do have to be careful in situations like this, right? Yeah, there's all kinds. So now in this case, we've we've declared all three, we've charged them. Yep. We stomp five yeah. inches up. He does like a backflip. Yeah, exactly. We're doing high kicks. We we <laughs> smash this commander, right? And this is great. But let me show you another thing that you could do that's really just as powerful. Let's say the person was a little smarter and they used this tank to guard most of the ability to get within engagement range. Yeah. Okay, this time though, you come in, make the charge, and you kill the tank in combat. Mm -hmm. You can now pile in, and now you've successfully piled into this commander, mm -hmm. and he doesn't fall back and shoot anymore. Super juicy. So now, next turn, you've turned off his ability to, to shoot, and that was still excellent. And so, so good. think about your pylons and your consolidates being able to get in and touch these things on the second floor. You might not notice it because of that three-dimensional yeah. nature, 
but you can do some magical things, uh, especially because you know we took a look that you can't fall back and do psychic. You can't fall back and shoot with so many things. A lot more units now can be touched and you're taking away their effectiveness. Especially because things like characters still want to be within range of something within within three inches of a, of a unit. That's right. So a lot of times you will see things like this where you have things on the bottom that are kind of ready for the charge, they're going to take it. You have characters up top uh, because of the, the hypotenuse and, and all that stuff. That's right. You can't shoot them, but it's much easier to pile in. Uh, your your yeah. Farseers aren't doing, I, I know that's what I'm thinking of. Your Farseers that's can't right. fall back and cast. Your Crisis, um, your Commanders can't fall back and shoot. That's right. It's huge. Yeah, the Knights can do, get a lot of efficiency out of this. The second someone tries to use that second floor against you, it's actually to their disadvantage most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And I love flipping this on its head because this used <laughs> to be the most annoying thing for a Knight player. So frustrating. Is all the Knights just walking around yeah. and not able to target stuff, especially when you have Commanders mm -hmm. and you had something on the ground floor that wasn't visible, that was closer. Right. Uh, it was a nightmare. Absolutely. So these are a couple examples that, um, again, when, when, when we just learn the rules and just say it, they sound really simple. Right. But then you look at how you apply them, especially for this army, and it's incredibly complex and you're going to want to practice it. It really yeah. does. Um, which is a cool thing for the game. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some army lists. All right, so let's talk about some list ideas. Yeah. Um, the first list we want to talk about is kind of the essential classic knights list. It's got some punchy, it's got some shooty. Um, well, and it's obviously changed here because we're <laughs> going to be taking mono knights. That's right. Um, obviously, you can Time soup me. in. You can soup in if you wanted to. That's not what we're talking about. No. We're talking about mono knights. That's right. That's how we roll. So we're talking about two gallants. Gallants are great. Generally, the, they're the, the cheapest. They've always been the cheapest of the knights. They're fantastic. They're awesome. Uh, running two of those, then you're going to be running two crusaders. That's right. Um, you have one gatling and one thermal. The uh, thermal is just to keep it cheap. It's also good yeah. at that tank meta that we've been it talking about. It is good at killing at killing tanks, but you still have the thermal to be able to clear out some of those screens, right? We yeah. do think that is essential to oh, a sorry, Gatling list. to kill out the screens. But oh yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So you have a bit of both worlds. Um, again, you're getting the stomps on those guys as well. Um, and then uh, we're you also you could fit in two uh, armagers. That's right. So right? these kind of, these are weird. They play a weird role. They're not as tough as the big. Big, uh, big dudes, obviously. That's right. The idea with this list is you actually kind of play them in the backfield objectives, um, kind of uh, uh, keeping They can try out. to get your secondaries, your primaries. Secondaries. That's right. Um, and you're just putting threat overload with the big knights, uh, blocking out objectives. And you're taking them instead of the Hellfriends just because they're cheaper. At that's, that point, that's the only you reason. just need bodies on objectives, and uh, they're cheaper, and uh, you know, they're good. Somebody wants to come fight you, but it's not about killing, so you don't need to over-index on the right. things that kill. Uh, you, and we all know the Helvern's missed anyways all the time, so it's it's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> now this list is great because the way you make this work is your two larger uh, Crusaders, they take the middle uh, board objectives. Mm -hmm. Your uh, your Armagers, they probably, probably stay on a back objective. Probably. If there's a lot of tank killing, the two of them kind of clump together, try to hold that objective. There's less tank killing, one can go out, grab a third objective. And then the two Gallants put the pressure on on your opponent. That's right. So they have to focus down those knights, and they can't afford to shoot the ones on the objectives. You want them to kill the ones that they have to kill, not the ones that they are important, the ones that are yeah. holding objectives in the, in the back, in the middle, things like that. Put that pressure on, and you really want to stack the primaries as much as possible. Again, that's right. You only tech, you only need three turns of primary to max it out. So this tries to play to that because at the end of the game. Knights are dying. You actually are playing with, with nothing much on the board at the end. But that's if you right. can push primary early, uh, we think that's probably one of the best ways to actually take knights. Look, look for ways to get as many points by the, the first three turns of the game. Yeah. Because you're going to lose knights. And, well, you, you <laughs> will know at the start of the game, can this army kill knights? Right. Okay, even if this secondary I can't get 15 points on, but I can mm -hmm. get six very early on. Take those six, go for it. That's true. And really just try to push your advantage bully hard. Um, of course, if you're up against an opponent that can't handle your, knight, your knights, then... You're going to have to play very differently, but we're assuming more often than not, someone's going to have your back. I'd say the one modification that you might want to consider, yeah. and we're not starting with this, even though it's probably a better idea, it's because it's not mono, is the idea that you could use the um, Agents of the Imperium, yep. which is all of the Inquisitors and most notably the Assassins, and now you could put them into a detachment without taking up a slot or mm -hmm. breaking your detachment. So you could squeeze uh, one into one of these detachments, and uh, they'll give you a, a lot of utility that you don't have. That's exactly what it is. Utility, utility, utility. Getting the secondaries that your knight can't. Um, doing certain actions uh, that characters can also do. That's right. Uh, things like that. So it's definitely something to play around with. Um, and uh, it, they give you everything. it doesn't you break can, any detachments. You could which tech is a into. Thing. You could bring a psyker to do the psyker secondaries yep. or cast and deny. And you know someone like Grayfax has amazing psychic powers. You could take a Kalexis to deny enemy psychic. Yeah. Or even a Kalexis is great on a backfield objective. Yeah. where it's really hard to see him and shoot him at that sixes <laughs> to hit. You could take um, any of the assassins you need to fill your gap, 
Mm -hmm. um, and so we think that's probably going to be fairly common. Yeah. But if you wanted to be a purist, only have your knights, you could still do it with those. <laughs> that's right. So those are some thoughts on knights um, as far as building lists. As we said, it is definitely tougher, right? So we wanted to really present the classic knight list. Of course. Think about some ways of, of playing off of that. Um, yeah, like we said, knights are in a weird spot as they've kind of always been, but hopefully this has been helpful uh, in finding ways that you can kind of play around them. We love yeah. the faction. Uh, we will be featuring them in a battle report uh, very soon, like That's we have right. been with all the new uh, faction we're gonna, focuses. We're going to show doing. you how to work with them in 9th edition in that exactly. battle report, so definitely don't miss that. Yep. So that'll be soon. Um, if you did enjoy this, definitely like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook. Let us know what you guys are doing with your knights. Do you have plans? Are you going to be souping? We're curious to hear what yeah. most people want to do. What kind of knight hard about mono, but you know, we won't judge you. Uh, so definitely drop by, say hi to us. Um, we'll see you guys very soon, right? See you then.